Welcome to Biggest Truths with Pastor V. We are continuing with our series on five levels of ignorance, but this one is Beyond Shadows, part three. Beyond Shadows, part three. We are continuing with five levels of ignorance. On our last series, we saw two level we saw two levels of ignorance uh, the first one we said it means not to know to be informed not to be aware of something when you're not informed about something where he says brethren i don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts he told us also not to be ignorant even concerning them that are dead so so there are many things that he tells us that he doesn't want us to be ignorant about. The second one we said is not to understand. Not because you didn't hear. You were heard it, but you didn't understand. And as a result, you suffer for it. But the third level of ignorance is to perceive wrongly. Is to, to have a defective or a deficient knowledge about something or about someone. I'll say that again. The third level of ignorance is to perceive wrongly, is to have a deficient or a defective knowledge concerning something or concerning someone. For example, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 29. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, why? Not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. He says, when you don't know the scriptures and when you don't know the power of God, what happens is that the result is error. Your life becomes an error. Your marriage becomes an error. Everything that concerns you, he says, you do err. It becomes a mistake. A mistake. There are so many people that have made, them, made so much mistakes in their lives. Some of them that they don't even know. You wonder how can someone make all these mistakes? But remember, it doesn't matter the mistake you've made when it comes to God. The Bible says he turns a curse into a blessing. But he said the reason why they made the air is because they don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. I already said the word scriptures there is, is uh, logos. Logos has to do with the, the intelligent word of God, the written word of God, as we find it in the Bible. But also, he said, they don't know the, what the power of God. The power of God. Hmm. Before we go there, check when the children of Israel, when Jesus came, they didn't understand him. They perceived him wrongly. And because they perceived him wrongly, they crucified him. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 21. He said, for they that that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not. It means they perceive him wrong, wrongly. No, yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. They were listening to the word of God. They were coming to the Sabbath and they were listening to the word of God. They were listening to the prophets, which means they were reading the writings of Moses, but they didn't understand them. They perceived them wrongly. They had a, defect, a defective or a deficient knowledge about them. They thought that this is what the Messiah will come and deliver them from the Roman Empire. But Jesus was not coming for that. And because of that, they crucified him. Because they thought this one is a false Christ. They crucified him. Because they didn't know the scriptures. And the power of God. The word power there is dunamis in Greek. The word dunamis, it means the ability to do the impossible. The, the word dunamis itself, it means miracles. It means the miracle working power of God. The miraculous. They didn't know how God, they didn't know, understand that the defective knowledge concerning the scriptures and concerning the power of God, how God works. They thought God would work according to their mind. But God has his power that works. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But listen to this. 
that power also works in us. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly up far above all that we ask or think according to the power that is work, at work in us. That power of God is at work in us. And how does it work? As it works, it produces results. It, it produces miracles. It produces signs and wonders. Once our understanding is not defective, we, we are able to produce results that are consistent with what the Word of God talks about. Check what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. He says, heal the sick. Is it not amazing that Jesus didn't say pray for the sick? When we read the Gospels, Jesus didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. Heal the sick. When you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 34 from verse 1, God was angry with the shepherds, shepherds means pastors, who couldn't heal the sick. So there are, there are people who say, oh, we don't heal the sick. Oh, God says heal the sick. This is what he says. Matthew 10. Oh, thank you. Verse 8. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. <laughs> you have freely received, freely given. Cast out devils. He has given us power over sickness and disease over over the death he has given us power over all devils there are people who say oh some devils are powerful devils are not they say it doesn't matter how powerful they are whether they are powerful or no matter they, where they are power or medium power he has given us power over all of them he has not left any of them out including the devil himself isn't what the bible says so the the, the, the word to heal there it, the word is Therapio. Therapio, it means to serve. You know, to, to, take care of the, to take care of the sick. It means, in a, general, in a general sense, it means the relieving the pain. But here, when Jesus said, heal the sick, he was talking about the miracle working power of God. The miraculous working power of God. And that miracle working power, it doesn't work only in healing, but it works in everything. Everything, wherever you need a miracle, you can direct that power. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 7, verse 21. He says, And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues. This is Jesus. And of evil spirits. And unto them that were blind, he gave sight. Unto them that they were blind, he gave sight. That's the power that is at work in us. Now, I want to show you the word sick. The word sick, number one, it means to be weak in faith. It means to be weak in faith. So when we say someone is sick, it's not only to be sick bodily, but it means to be sick in faith. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4, verse 19 and 20, and say, and not being weak in faith, because that not his own body now dead when he dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's home, but he was strong. He says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You see how this works. So, not being weak in faith. When we read Romans 14 verse 1, it says, him that is weak in faith, receive. Him that is weak in faith. So, it's talking about those that when someone is weak in their faith, which means the word of God does not find strength, power in their hearts. Because the Bible tells us, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Also, the word to be sick, it means to be weak, emotional, and mental. It means to be drained out, to be weak, emotional, and mentally. And, and uh, because, let, let me move to the next one. The word to also to be to be sick, it means to be weak in riches, to be poor. To be weak in riches. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich yet for your sake, he, he was rich yet for your sake, he became poor, so that through his poverty he become rich. Also, the word, it means to be destitute or to be weak in dignity, in dignity or authority, not to have power. But in Christ Jesus, 
we have received dignity, we have received power, we can now stand and perform. You see, when in Christ Jesus we receive, when we receive, when we understand scriptures in Christ Jesus, we receive the fullness, we receive full restoration spiritually, mentally, bodily, and in finances or in resources. Number four, the word ignorance, it means, yeah, it means, and this is even more serious, it means to ignore. It means to disregard, to despise, not to know. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 2 verse 4. He says, Oh, despise thou the riches of his glory, of his goodness, and for and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. He said, The goodness of God leads you to repentance. But Romans, rather, was chapter 4, verse 6. He says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Check. He didn't say, My people are destroyed because the devil is powerful. He said, My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. He said, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou should not be a priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of the Lord, I will also forget your children. What they call a generational curse is just here. It's not a generational curse. It's a generational ignorance. God, he said, because you have forgotten the law of the Lord, I will also forget your children. Why? Because if you are ignorant of God's word, what you pass, you pass that same ignorance to your children. So children suffer not because God is cursing them. They suffer because the parent failed to pass the knowledge of the Lord. So there's what they call a generational curse is a generational ignorance. He said you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When knowledge comes, curses are broken. Curses are broken. There is nothing to break. L listen to what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. He said, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Why? He said, To their enemies without knowing it, and because they have no knowledge. He said, They have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Not because the devil is powerful. He said, The reason why they are in captive. You know, the word captive there, it means to be naked. It means to be stripped off of all your valuables. He says because they have no knowledge. He's not talking about scientific knowledge here. He's talking about the knowledge of God's word, the revelation of the, the revelational knowledge of God's word. True truth, the divine truth, the, 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 the transitant truth, the truth of God's word, the ones that God reveals to us. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I wanted to see something about the children of Israel. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 3, he said, for they, he said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. He said, the children of Israel, they've gone ahead to seek their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. There are people that want to worship God in their own way and in their own terms. We don't worship God the way we want to worship Him. We worship Him the way He wants us to worship Him. And the way He wants us to worship Him is already established in His Word. You know, there are people that say, I grew up worshiping God like this in our church, in our home. This is how we worship God. No, we don't worship Him the way. Actually, we don't even give to Him the way we want to give, we give to Him. We shouldn't give to Him the way we want to give to Him. We shouldn't worship Him the way we should we want to worship him. We shouldn't even pray to him the way we want to pray for, to him. You know, there are people who say, uh, just pray whatever you feel. Just pray. No, you don't pray whatever you feel. You pray according to his word. He says, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He didn't say we should pray to him the way we, we, we are feeling or we want to. We want to. He said we should pray to him the way he wants us to pray. We should give to him the way he wants us to give to him. That's how to worship God. But he says the children of Israel, they want to worship God in their own way. They want to worship God the way they want to worship him. They have established a way that they want to worship God. 
And today there are so many people like that. They want to serve God the way they want to serve Him. Not the way He has ordained. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The last one that I want to see, level of ignorance, is to be, to be unknown. The last level of ignorance is to be unknown. What does it mean? It means to be insignificant. It means to be small. It means to be despised. It means to lack honor. It, it, it means to be nobody. Listen to what the Bible says. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. He says, Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I did promise that your father, your that your, your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me, for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me, they will be lightly esteemed. Listen to what God is saying. He is saying to Eli and his children, He says, You have despised me. You have not honored me. And He said, Because of that, you will be lightly esteemed. You will not be exalted, which means you will not fulfill the will of God concerning your life. It reminds me of, um, of Cain. The Bible tells us that God advised Cain that sin was at his door, but he must rule over it. But he refused. He went ahead to kill his, his brother. And when he killed his brother, the Bible tells us that God said to Cain, because you have done this, the ground is cursed. You yourself are cursed. But check this. When you receive what God has said, I want to see that. When you receive what God has said to you, when you receive his word, this is what he said to Abraham, chapter 12 of Genesis from verse 1. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 12. From verse 1, he says, I will make thee of a great nation, I will bless thee. Thou shalt be a blessing, I will bless them. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee. And, in, and I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Check this. He says, in you, Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Because Abraham received the word of God. Check this. Which means when we receive the word of God, we are blessed. When we receive... The purpose and the will of God is to bless us, is to exalt us, is to lift us up, is to give us victory over our enemies, is to make sure that there's no force of darkness prevails over us. But that happens based on those five levels of ignorance. I told you, when you are informed by the word of God. Number two, when you understand the word of God. Number three, when you perceive it right and instead of wrongly, when we have when you don't have a deficient knowledge of God's word, like the children of Israel thought. And number four is when you understand, when you don't reject the counsel of the Lord, that Cain, he rejected the counsel of the Lord. The children of priest Eli rejected the counsel of the Lord. Therefore, they couldn't fulfill the the will of God. But when we receive the word of God like Abraham, victory is ours. I know you are listening because you have received the word of God. You love the word of God. Let me pray for you. Today, maybe you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You see, the Bible says when Jesus broke the bread, the Bible said their eyes were open. One scripture, last scripture that I wanted to sing. When you read Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15, it said, The labor of fools, where is every one of them? Why? Because he's ignorant to his way to the city or to town. He says, When you do, when you say when you're ignorant about your ways on how to do what you're supposed to do, he says that he says that becomes a curse instead of a blessing. But you are blessed. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, as your, your, your son, Jesus Christ. I receive him as my Lord and my Savior. I confess that is the Lord of my life in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, please go ahead and contact us on those numbers that are shown on the screen. We have even some books and other materials that we would like to send to you that may help you to fulfill your purpose in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for watching.